In this lecture, let's go ahead and let's fetch the other important details about the recipe which we have. So if you actually inspect this, and if you take a look at the object which is returned by this particular API call, you will be able to see that there's a whole bunch of other information which we have about the recipe which we fetch. So we have already fetched the name of the recipe as well as the image. Now let's fetch some other details about that particular recipe. So for example, over here, I want to get the prep time for this particular recipe. So if you take a look at this, there's a property called as ready in minutes, meaning that this recipe will be ready in 45 minutes. It also has the number of servings as well. It also has some other information about that particular recipe as well. So for example, if the recipe is vegan, if it's vegetarian, if it's healthy or if it's popular or not. Along with this, it also has the other information like price per serving as well. So what we wish to do is we wish to take some information from here from this particular object and display that information up over here. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll go back here to VS Code inside the food details. And right now, as we are only fetching the food title. So instead of just fetching the food title, let's delete the food details text which we have and let's add another div. And in that particular div, let's add the food title. So I'll cut the food title from here as well as the image and paste it inside this inner div. That's because we are going to structure it in a different manner. So after this, let's include the food title in an H1 tag and let's cut this from here and paste it inside this H1. And right after this div ends, Let's go ahead and let's create another span tag here. And that span tag is going to go ahead and display the time it takes for this recipe to get ready. So here I would say span and in the span tag, let's say I want to use a strong tag to kind of display this text prominently. So if I want to display the time it takes for this recipe to complete, I could simply access that property by using this ready in minutes. So I could copy this and I could say, food dot ready in minutes. So that will give me access to the time it takes for this recipe to get ready. So as soon as I save this, you will notice that if I just take a look at this over here, if I scroll down here, we have the 45 taken from here. And then I just need to display minutes in front of it. So here I could say minutes and in order to display or in order to convey that this is the time taken, what I could also do is I could add an emoji here of a clock. So I'll add a clock here or a timer here. So as to signify that this is the prep time required for that dish. And along with this, now let's say if I want to display if that particular recipe is vegetarian or not. So in order to display that up over here, there's a property called as vegetarian. So we want to check if the food is vegetarian and if that's vegetarian, then let's assume we want to say that it's a vegetarian dish or else if it's not vegetarian, then we want to specify that it's non-vegetarian. So how exactly can we do that over here? So for that, I'll add another span tag here. So let's add a span tag and in there, we'll make use of curly brackets and say food dot vegetarian. And here we'll make a check by adding a ternary operator. So if food.vegetarian is true, that means in that case, I want to display vegetarian or else I want to display non-vegetarian. All right, so if I save this, now it says vegetarian here. So let's also add an emoji for vegetarian over here as well. So I'll again go ahead and let's make use of a carrot for displaying that this is a vegetarian meal. And let's use a symbol of meat over here to specify non veg. So let's search for meat. Let's add that over there. All right. So if I save this right now for this recipe, it says that it's vegetarian. And let's say if I now go ahead and choose something else. So let's choose a dish which kind of has some meat in it. So for example, I assume this is going to have some non-vegetarian things in it. So as you can see, this time we get that this recipe is non-vegetarian. So after this, let's go ahead and let's add some other information as well. So let's add the number of servings the food has. So I'll create another span tag here. 
and let's create a strong tag in there. And over here I could say food.servings and that will give us the number of servings this actually prepares. So I would say serves these many people. And right before that, as we want to display the people here as the unit, uh, let's search for people or let's search for an emoji which is family let's choose this one if i save this as you can see now it says it takes 45 minutes so six people it's non-vegetarian all right so after this let's also display the price per serving as well but even before that there's one more category which we need to mention here and that is vegan so vegetarian and vegan are different categories so if that's vegan then we also have to display that separately so in order to display that i'll again go ahead add another span tag here and i would say food dot vegan if that's true then i want to say this is a vegan meal so vegan or else i don't want to display anything so i will leave this blank and over here let's add an animal friendly symbol so let's enter a cow here for vegan and if i go back here as this is not vegan it won't display however if we select pizza bites with pumpkin uh, even that's not vegan maybe because it uses milk as one of the ingredients all right so after this let's go ahead and let's add one more property and that property is going to be for displaying the price per serving so in order to add that i guess we have misplaced this div this div should actually end over here let's save this and right after the image let's create another div so i'll create another div here let's cut this and let's end it over here all right so we are going to fix those divs later but for now let's go ahead and let's add another property here inside a span so i'll create a div here and inside this div i'll create a span and inside this span i want to display the price per serving so food dot and the property which displays the price per serving is this so i'll simply copy this and i would say display the price per serving but as you can see this kind of seems like a little bit odd because uh, as this might be in dollars it cannot be 195 dollars so i guess we have to divide it by 100 and i would say per serving and you could also add a dollar sign up over here as well so i'll go ahead and add a dollar sign right in front of it all right so now if I save this, as you can see, this is what the information looks like. So after adding this, now the next thing which we need to fetch here is the instructions. So if you talk about instructions for this particular recipe, if you scroll all the way to the top, here you have something called as analyzed instructions. And analyzed instructions is actually an array. And in that particular array, you have certain steps, which are the number of instructions for that particular recipe. So now what we wish to do is we wish to fetch each and every instruction from this particular object which looks pretty complex. So let's go ahead and let's break it down into a couple of simple steps here. So in order to fetch those instructions what I could do is I could say alright I need to display those instructions after everything ends. So I'll go below over here I'll create another div over here and let's say this thing says instructions and let's fetch the instructions and display them here so in order to fetch these complex set of instructions from this complex object first of all we need to understand where this object belongs to so this object is the food object so inside the food object first i have to access analyzed instructions so over here i would say food dot analyzed instructions and in order to actually not make any spelling mistake it's better if i copy that particular property name so after analyzed instruction if you go in there here you have one object which has an index zero so that means now i need to access this so to access this i would say analyze instructions of zero and when i open this thing up now we have name as well as the steps so then we have to get access to steps so i would say dot steps all right after this this steps is actually an array 
which means that we need to map through every single step which we have. So I could say steps.map and from this I would get access to every single step. So this every single step over here is nothing but it's every single object again which we have in there. So from this particular step what I would do is I would create some sort of an item. So over here as these are instructions let's put them up in a list. So here I would use an li tag and in order to add that li tag first of all I'll use the parentheses and say li opening and a closing tag and in there what I would do is I want to access this particular instruction. So this is again present in step. So to access this I have to say step dot step. So remember that this is steps which is this array. This step is every single object which we get from here and now in order to access every single instruction here I have to here say take this step and access this step from there. Alright, so this might look a lot complex but if you kind of go ahead and follow this process step by step of accessing the object then accessing another array inside the object then accessing the zeroth element of that array then accessing another array inside that object then again going inside that array again accessing all the elements using map then again accessing the object inside it then again accessing the property of that object. So this is what exactly we have done here and even though this might look complex but as you can see it's quite simple if you follow each and every step. So if I save this as you can see immediately all the instructions actually popped up over here which is all fine and good. However there's one little problem with this and that problem is uh, let's say if I close this this works well as of now but watch what happens when I hit refresh. So when I hit refresh the app actually crashes and the reason for this crash is if you go to the console here it says cannot read properties of undefined reading zero and why this happens is because when we first go ahead and reload our application what our application does is that it immediately starts rendering whatever we have up over here but when we load the application it takes a while for this API to give us back a response. So unless and until we get back some response from here we do not want to render the list of instructions which we have here. So that means now we need a way to find out when we have actually received that data and only after we are sure that alright we have received all the data from here only then we actually want to go ahead and fetch those instructions from here. So that's what we wish to do. So the question is how exactly would we know when the data is loaded. So in order to keep track of that what you could do is you could add a state here called as is loading state. So that is loading state is going to be a boolean value so that means whenever the data is loading it would be set to true and when the data is completely loaded we will set that state to false so that we will understand that now the data is loaded. So let's create that state here so I would say const is loading and let's also use set is loading as well to change the status of this. So let's say this is a state and when our application loads for the very first time the is loading should be set to true because the data is not yet loaded. Alright and now we wish to change the status of is loading to false whenever the data has been successfully loaded. So the data actually loads after this step. So once this step inside use effect is complete that means here we could be sure that alright now the data has been loaded. So here we set the is loading to false. That means the data is no longer loading now we could go ahead and start fetching the instructions. So now once we have the is loading set up now what we could do is we could go ahead and conditionally render this particular set of instructions only when the is loading is set to false. So here what we do is we make a check is loading if the data is loading in that particular case instead of actually displaying the instructions what we wish to do is uh, we wish to go ahead and display some message like alright the data is loading. So over here I would say if this happens then I want to just render out a paragraph. So here I'll use curly brackets or even if you don't use that I could simply say paragraph and loading. Let's display the loading message and it's actually better if you display it 
uh, down over here. So I'll cut this and let's display it after the instructions. All right. So if it is loading, then I want to display this or else. So here, this is a ternary. So if this is loading, then display this or else. If it's not loading, that means now I am free to actually go ahead and load my instructions. So what I could do is take all of this except for the curly brackets, cut this and paste it up over here. Save this and Proteo is going to auto format that for us. And now I could get rid of the curly brackets from here. So now if I save this, even though this code looks pretty complex, now the error over here would be gone. So if I hit refresh this time, uh, we won't have any errors here. But we do have an error over here for the key prop, which is just a warning, which we could solve by adding a key prop, which we have learned in the previous lecture as well. But this time, as you can see, uh, we have loaded the instructions without any issues. And even if I click on some other recipe, the instructions for that recipe would be loaded as well. And our application works absolutely fine. So this is how you could go ahead and load all the details about that particular recipe. But there's one more important thing which we need to fetch here. So for making these recipes, we actually need a whole variety of items and we also have access to the quantities of those items as well. So in the next lecture, we will learn how to actually go ahead and fetch the ingredients or the items required for this recipe. But even before that, in the next lecture, first of all, we have to go ahead and style up this particular food details component which we have because right now uh, it does not have any kind of styling or formatting. So let's learn how to format this in the next one.